Hello, comrades and friends. With the new ranked season coming up, so the current one is coming to a close, I wanted to have a talk about what I wanted to do with my channel going forwards. So, one of the things I want to do is I want to get to Diamond again. Um, I've gotten to Diamond in ranked most seasons. I haven't managed to do it this season with rotation. But I want to get it in the coming season. And I will be grinding ranked with this inventive Grixis deck that was created by Mega Mogwai. I'll have his channel, uh, the video where I got this deck from, and his deck list in the description. I want to start grinding with this deck, and I will be trying to make Grixis Grind content, which hopefully will be daily content, because I want to start using this channel and uploading videos regularly. Alright, so, to have a little talk about the deck, um, Mega Mogwai, he created this deck, and he created it for the streamer event. Unfortunately, since the streamer event was best of one, he wasn't able to make a sideboard for it. So I've made my own sideboard, which I'll go into later. I want to have a talk about some of the cards, though. Um, namely, Tyrant Scorn, which I don't know if I want to keep it or not, as well as Bedevil, which I want to add a fourth one. So, Tyrant Scorn, it is really good in some aspects that it deals with Yorvo, who is one of Mono Green's uh, big win cons right now. Because he's CMC3, but he gets really, really big really quickly. And other two mana removal spells, like Lava Coil, will only hurt him the turn he enters. Otherwise, it deals with Brineborn, Brineborn Cutthroat, uh, which is always good. And it is an instant, so you can try and counter Simic Flash that way. Um, it also deals with Prison Reef, which it's a bit of a standard mainstay at this point. It's a very good 3-drop, gives you amazing card advantage or mana ramp that gets around Narset. So, there are some cons of running Tyrant Swan though, because it doesn't deal with Phoenix at all. It doesn't deal with Nightpack Ambusher at all, and it doesn't deal with Questing Beast. With all of those creatures, the only thing it can do is bounce them to hand. That doesn't really affect Nightpack Ambusher nor Questing Beast all that much. It will affect um, Phoenix a little. But not all that much, because what they can do is just discard it and then play it from their yard later on. So there are some pros, some cons of Tyrant Scorn, um, but all of those creatures I just mentioned, Questing Beast, Arclight Phoenix, and... Um, and uh, Nightpack Ambusher, Lava Coil hit, uh, beats. Lava Coil will deal 4 damage to those targets and exile them. Against Nightpack Ambusher though, it's, uh, it's a sorcery, so they usually have a counter spell up. Lava Coil also has the ability to hit Shifting Ceratops, which Tyrant Swan doesn't. It's not only a Shifting Ceratops CMC4, but it's also protection from blue, and yeah, Tyrant Scorn is blue. So I might swap it out for Lava Coil, 
I don't want to remove it at all though, and I, if I was to swap it out, it'd have to be another 2 CMC spell. Because looking at our curve, we only have 5 uh, 2 CMC spells, 4 of which are Thought Erasure, which you have to run. And I don't want it to become 2, 3, and 4 heavy. It's already quite 4 heavy because you want to ramp out into Fire Zone Invention and then start going off the Drawn From Dreams. And that's the basis of the deck. But, yeah, so you want to have those two mana plays. So you can do stuff on turn 2 against certain decks. Because certain decks, you really do need to have that early game, those early game plays. So, yeah, I might swap out Tyrant Spawn for a Lava Coil. I might put in another card by taking another Lava Coil or another Tyrant Spawn by taking out one of the other cards. But I guess that's something that I'll do as I play with the deck and get to know it a bit better. Another thing I want to do is add a fourth Bedevil, because Bedevil is really good. Um, not only because it deals with artifacts, creatures, or planeswalkers, but currently in the meta, it's really good against multiple decks. Against the Magic Aids Oko deck, which is the uh, blue-green or blue-green-white um, deck centered around Oko, What it does is it creates the food tokens, or it creates other sorts of tokens. It can also be Sultai. Uh, Magic Aids one was Sultai. Um, so yeah, it makes Oko. It gets Oko, creates tokens. So say with um, uh, Dreadhorde Invasion, you'll make those zero zero zombie tokens, zombie army tokens with a one one counter. Oko targets them, they become a 3-3 three, three green elk for the 1-1 one, one counter, and then you can just keep on doing that each turn. Um, yeah, so it deals with the tokens, it also deals with um, the artifacts that Oko creates, as well as it deals with Oko himself. So the devil is really good versus the Oko deck, and I sort of want to add a fourth one, it's also really good versus Esper, because the Esper deck currently is using Dance of the Mance and Doom Foretold um, to get a bit of a combo going by uh, essentially reanimating artifacts and enchantment cards from their graveyard uh, so then they can sacrifice with Doom Foretold, and it means that you, when you're face versing them, you have to keep sacrificing your permanents. And it doesn't affect them as much because they just have all these really cheap artifacts and enchantments that they can just sacrifice and then reanimate again. The Devil deals with Teferi, it deals with artifacts that they bring back, and if the Doom Foretold goes off, it deals with the 2 2 Knights, and if Dance of the Mance, uh, gets an X cost of 6 or greater, then it can deal with at least one of those creatures. But that's more of a uh, desperation play. Otherwise, in the deck, it's pretty decent uh, from how I've been playing it. But that's about it for the main board. I might go into the sideboard. So I've added my own sideboard. I've added Disfigure versus Synth Flash, as well as Mono Red, and it deals with some of the uh, Mono Dorks in green. Um, so it's not a bad card, it's pretty good, and it gives us that early game play versus those decks that really need to get off the ground early. We have done... we have added in Jurass. Jurass is really good versus the Oko deck and Esper Control, and it can be good versus Phoenix, too. Um, and it's also decent against Mono Red, uh, trading one Duress for, say, a Light of the Stage, or one of their Burn spells can 
save you quite a bit. Um, obviously the optimum duress target is either light up the stage or cavalcade. But yeah, duress is just really, really um, flexible as a card, and you can bring it in versus a lot of different matchups. I've added in Noxious Grasp uh, against Esper and Simic Flash, as well as Mystical D Dispute versus Esper and Simic Flash. Noxious Grasp also is really good versus Mono Green, but I'll get to that after talking about Esper and Simic Flash. So, Noxious Grasp versus Esper, you can deal with Teferi, and if they dance with the Mance, um, their enchantments are all white, so you can just Noxious Grasp them. Otherwise, Mystical Dispute, it does seem a little bit counterintuitive with Fires of Invention, but the point is to have it early game to counter a Teferi, or to counter um, an early game uh, Doom Foretold, or you can use it to counter a Thought Erasure. So it's good early game, it's like Spell Pierce, it's really good early game, but then it falls off pretty fast. And against Simic Flash, a lot of their cards are blue, and having that one mana open to counter a Brimborn Cutthroat, or anything like that, is really useful. And then Noxious Grasp, against Mono Green, all the creatures are green, all the Planeswalkers are green, destroys something, gives you a life, instant speed, it's pretty self-explanatory. Elder Spell, I've added this in. A lot of Planeswalkers, well, es Esper doesn't really, well, or can't run to Fairy 5 anymore since he's rotated, but I have seen a couple Jeskai Walker decks, which I will be running this against, as well as the current Esper deck still runs things like Teferi, and Elder Spell can get some really quick wins with uh, Nickel Ballus Dragon God or Liliana. By if you just Elder Spell, or with Nickel Ballus, if you Elder Spell two creatures, oh, sorry, two Planeswalkers, he can ult and win. With Liliana, you have to get three, so you um, get the... Sorry, you only need to get two, sorry. Uh, you need to get rid of two, two Planeswalkers to get the minus nine going, and at that point you've probably won the game, because they'll only have one land, and whatever else they have, but only one of, which is really good. Um, and yeah, so the Elder Spell is a bit of an I win card in cer against certain decks. Alright, now for some other ones. Ashiok Dream Render. Really good uh, if they're running uh, Fable Passage, as most decks do right now, because it's really good. It bends your deck out, um, and once you get to mid-game, it comes in untapped as well. And you just get to mana fix really easily, that's why we run, we run basics, because of Fabled Passage. But yeah, so Ashiok turns that off, um, because they can't search the library. Really good. But then the minus one, that's uh, why I'm running it, against um, uh, Physic, sorry Physic, Phoenix. Against Phoenix and against Esper Control, it's really good, because you mill them, and you can exile their graveyard, so if they have phoenixes in their graveyard, they get exiled, they can't uh, return them. If it's Esper Control, you exile their graveyard, they can't dance the manse, get their stuff back. As well as against Esper, Ashiok's a permanent, so you can play her out expecting her to be sacrificed by Doom Foretold. Um. <clears throat> assuming you have something more important. Otherwise you have Unmoored Ego. Unmoored Ego versus Esper Control is bonkers, because you can just name Dance of the Mance or Doom Foretold, and you've essentially ruined their win con. If you get rid of Dance of the Mance, which is what I generally do, because that's my first choice to remove, then their only win cons are Doom Foretold 
um, getting the 2-2 knight token and uh, Teferi bouncing Oath of Kaya. And some of them run about two copies of Murderous Rider. So they don't really have a win con anymore. And if they do, they're really, really small and they would take a long time. So yeah, Un Unmod Ego is just really good versus them. Uh, Unmod Ego versus Oko as well. You can get rid of Oko, which is sort of the staple of the deck. If you get rid of that, then they're left with a far weaker deck. And finally, there's Enter the God Eternals. It's good versus Mono Red, and against Mono Green it can save you a little bit. The life is essentially what you run this for against Mono Red. Um, because generally speaking, we run so we run 26 lands. We can generally get out to turn 5 with 5 lands. We can curve out pretty smoothly. And if we have, say, two Enter the God Eternals in hand and a Fires of Invention on the field, then that's that's eight life and eight eight is on view. That's really good. Yeah, so I bring it in versus Mono Red mostly. Um, same with the Disfigure and the Duress. I just want to make sure that I can survive until I get that turn four Fires of Invention to start popping off. Anyway. Uh, I might want to talk about some of the cards I might add, um, have a bit of a talk about them. So, one of the things was Leyline. In my opinion, Ashiok is better, but Leyline can also be a free card at the start of the game. It could be good, maybe. But I think it's a little bit too situational right now. I think Ashiok is just better currently. Otherwise, there's Witch's Vengeance. I mean, it's a better cry of the Carnarium versus um, tribal decks. I'll put a bit of an asterisk there because Cry of the Canarium does exile. But say if knights become a really good card in the future, no, a really good archetype in the future, then Witch's Vengeance will just blow them out, because it deals with so many knights. Uh, otherwise, there haven't been too many other tribal decks. So, yeah, so it's pretty situational. We'll have to see how the meta evolves. Um, and otherwise, I wanted to have a look at Murderous Rider. If I find that when I add that fourth the devil, uh, that that's not enough, I might be adding Murderous Rider. Uh, but that's only if I'm finding lots of creatures and planeswalkers. Um, the one of the cons of Murderous Rider is the loss of life. That's really devastating early game versus this deck because we don't really do much except try and survive early game. And uh, the 2 life can be pretty crucial. That being said, the 2-3 life linker can be really good against certain decks. So Mono Red, they don't have Lightning Bolts anymore, they only have Skewer the Critics. So Murderous Rider demands that Skewer the Critics. Otherwise, a 2-3 life link can be bit of a, uh, a saving grace versus Mono Red. Um, but that's about it for the possible maybe boards. Of course, this will change once the meta becomes a bit more defined. And that's about everything I wanted to talk about. So I'm just going to say thanks to Mega Mogwai for creating this deck list. Um, again, his channel the video where I got it from, and his deck list will be in the description. And thanks for watching. I hope to see you soon.